Hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is a quick video update uh, just on what's happening here. I'm still sand and paint and I'll give you a bit more of an update on Mortimer and how that's going. But it's starting to look pretty nice. We'll try and get a video out later in the week about that. But there's a fair bit of painting involved and a fair bit of prep work. And to be honest, there's so many machine restorations at the moment on YouTube that I was going to try and condense it all into one little video. So hopefully we can do that. And there'll be another video too on the mechanical parts. I've got castings. Um, there's this brass one, which is the flywheel or the... the um, dog plate just to replace the old one and I've got a couple of these cast up which are the new hand wheels they still got to be drilled and tapped that's another job and a couple of these which didn't come out particularly well they're going to have to be drilled too but they're just in aluminium so I've got the castings done that's that's a job that needs to be done so there'll be a video about machining them and getting the headstock back in all operational condition. Picked up some nice things this week. Been lying off this book for a while and finally bought it. Wood turning on the foot treadle lathe, 1922. Good fun book, well worth a look. And I'll put that to good use. This is the other one I've picked up. A friend got me this, which is the International Correspondence School uh, Reference Library on woodworking, pattern making, moulding, core making, and cupola practice. So, making bits from scratch. It's got some cool engravings. The only real dates I can find inside are 1901. So, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, making patterns, casting, moulding, splitting patterns, core making, weighting, woodworking tools and things. Cool book. Big thanks to my mate Jim for finding that. Inside, and this might interest some of you guys and girls, there was a heap of paper dolls. Now these are cool. But I don't know how they work or what they're part of or whether they're part of something else. There's an assortment of heads. There's a policeman. And what looks like an artist maybe. And a pixie. There's a worried looking girl there. And a lady who looks a bit strict. And a little boy in a hat there. And there's some pants. Round pants and square pants. Long pants. And a skirt or two. Some more pants. And this piece in the middle, I don't know what that does. Or how it all goes together. If anyone's ever seen these. Or looks and seen in a book how they cut out or made. They're kind of pretty cool, so any ideas on that? Let me know. Leave a comment. The other thing I've lashed out and done is bought a set of boring bars, and the last few times I've needed a boring bar, I've ended up making something, and that's okay. And I've got some pretty reasonable boring bars like it. But I haven't actually sat down and made a decent set like Stefan has or some of the other guys. Anyway, these are replaceable tips. And we'll see how we go with these. There's a, a small one and a couple of bigger ones. One of them's got, uses the other side of the tip so that... so that you use the four corners 
and the six and one up to sixteen millimeters and down to eight millimeters. So that's something I bought and they might be pretty useful. Let me get some machining out of them. It's a good kit. Australian seller, they're Chinese I imagine. And they take a CMT 06024204 insert. And we'll see how they go. Ideally I'd like a decent set of carbon or cobalt steel adjustable boring bars, but it hasn't happened yet. So that's something I picked up. The other thing I picked up, and it's a bit special, and I'm a bit honoured to be included in the list of people who got one of these, and I think he's still got them available if anyone wants to send him some money. They're pretty special though. And that's a Randy Richard scribe. You've probably seen his series of videos on making them on the turret lathe, which is interesting, or very interesting in itself, but he'll engrave it for you. That one says Emma Ritson. It's my name. And the serial number. And R in the shop. The one R back to front, like he does it. And blued, blued rings there. And a cobalt scriber. Someone said, and it's a smart idea, is why didn't you get him to make you a graver too? And I don't know whether you can get square bits or whether that's something that's even part of the deal, but a carbide graver would be really nice in, in that sort of shape and pattern. So, something to think about, Randy. But that's a really nice tool and something I'm going to treasure for a long time and something I'm going to use a lot. There's a bit of weight in it, but the threads and everything are really nicely made and the, the radius is on the ends. This has got a bit of a patina on it already. It was shiny when it came, but I have sort of haven't let it go very much, so you've got to expect that from my fingers. So, anyway guys... That's what's been happening this week. Mostly I've been just cleaning paint. If we have a look, these are the legs and they're down ready to put some filler in. They are pretty rough actually, but if we're gonna pinstripe them and paint them, we might as well do a nice job. If we look, it needs a fair bit of filler through there. But look, this is the bed. This is about ready to paint. This is pretty sweet actually, smooth. There's no rust marks left in there. I've filled them all. It's as smooth as a baby's bottom, as some people I know would say. And that's ready for top coat. So are these bits. It's the headstock and the tail stock and the pulley. So I'm going to get back to scratching paint, but and and dry and wet sanding, but. Thanks for watching guys, and more soon, and give us a thumbs up if you can. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And I'll try and get a video out a bit later on about how this lathe's progressing. 